Welcome to our limited edition advisory session. Tonight, I'm happy to be with Projects RH RC Migration. We're going to introduce you to Paul Raftree from Projects RH and Juan Rincon from RC Migration. Our goal tonight is to turn chaos into clarity, especially in this post-pandemic time. Uh, this is possible because we believe that working together is better. In fact, the very premise of our mission is together we can achieve more. So let's begin. Um, I would like to start trying to explain a little bit of the context. Why is important to be an entrepreneur in Australia? So. I would like to present you the next video. That's our context, and I guess Australia is trying to create excellent pathways for all entrepreneurs around the world. Paul, I want to start with you. Tell me a little bit about Projects RH, and let's start this conversation. Thanks, Nicholas. Um, Projects RH is based in Sydney, and our role in life is to connect good projects with money. One of the exciting things we do is we work with entrepreneurs. And one of the wonderful things about money, it's, it's agnostic to most things. So what we're looking for is enthusiastic people with good ideas or who are ready to embrace other people's good ideas and are ready to deliver and have the energy to drive projects. We're at the moment, we're particularly discussing projects which fit into a niche which qualify people for visas to come and stay in Australia. But we're an investment helping firm. We are not a migration agency firm and we rely on experts like Juan to explain to the clients their legal obligations. We work with Juan by preparing business plans and introducing good people to projects, or if they have their own projects, to money to help them on their journey. Oh, thank you. Uh, Juan, so let's go with you. Let's talk about our swim migration. Okay, thank you, Nicolas. Thank you, Paul, for your kind introduction. Uh, yes, RCS, RC migration, uh, we are a migration firm. We, our, our purpose is to get the visas approved. This is what the company is for. Uh, very simple. Uh, we have been working for people who like to migrate to Australia and to establish business in Australia for more than 13 years. Um, and in this time, we have been um, 
witness how Australia is attracting different people uh, across the time. First of all, was the the uh, uh, a more indiscriminate migration, later on a skill migration, and now the government is is looking for entrepreneurs, people who uh, assist Australia in the economic economic recovery, and this is why they have choose uh, these growth factors and uh, they are offering the opportunity to have the permanent residency in Australia for them and their families and the Australian citizenship. Uh, we are the legal side of the of, of the of the project. I think if we consider this um, um, this this uh, this um, entrepreneur visas basically you have to see that is a legal part which is all the migration part to get the approval from the states or territories and the commonwealth approval but also is a business side uh, that where is projects our age is the expert who assist the people to make the right investment and to uh, put the business in a profitable form. Uh, we will focus in getting all the legal approvals for the investor and the families. Okay, so, well, thank you and welcome both. Uh, I believe, as an entrepreneur, that things start with a, with a dream and then somehow it came true. Many of us uh, wish to stay in Australia or come to Australia and be an entrepreneur. Is that possible and how? I don't know if Certainly. you want to help us with this, uh, Juan or Paul. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you like, let me talk a little bit about the legal opportunities and we'll pass the, to Paul. So let's see, uh, Australia has at the moment, th three migration priorities. And one of them is investors. Within these investors or business and investor visas, entrepreneur visa is the flagship of the program. I mean the flagship of the program because it's, tra it's attracting people who like to make the difference in Australia, to put business in Australia. For that, they have been make a quota of three times greater than before. In, in the last year, or in the most per, uh, recent year, there were 5,000 uh, places for entrepreneurs. Now it's 13,500. So this, this is a clear understanding of that this is the kind of migrant, of migrant we are looking for. Secondly, the red tape, the process, all the bureaucracy and the, 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 the process has been streamlined. So we are talking about a visa that end to end is last is it, the process is lasting six months, 26 weeks. And third, this is a people who with a, with a business visas, they have a, a travel exception. So yes, Australia has the borders clause, but no for entrepreneurs, because if you are an entrepreneur, you have a travel exemption. So definitely it, it is a priority. I think this is a government interest, not just for the federal national government, but also for the states. Uh, basic elements, benefits of the visa, too many. First of all, you you can you can come with your own ideas or if you don't have an idea to put a company ask project and reach and they have options for you second uh, the amount of in, to invest is two hundred thousand dollars and um, as the minimum size of the business idea you can to to put uh, forward uh, and you can have only the 30 percent so you can you can team with another two people to 
to to to to make investment. Third, this is this is a this is a a visa for you and your family. Fourth, you don't need a skill assessment. I mean, you don't need having a university degree, or you don't have to provide a, a minimum experience. Uh, fourth, the, the level of English that you need is really, really normal. I think it's called competent English, which is not as difficult as those you need to make a master's degree or come here as a student and, and you know, all some sorts. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's definitely a, 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 a really good pathway. It seems to be, and but Paul, is that all true? Because yes, as a legal requirements, um, I believe uh, people, entrepreneurs can achieve all of these requirements with some help, but creating the business, gathering the documents, is, is that easy or what is all oh. these tricks? I want no, to hear no, your opinion I don't know it's about. trick. I don't know if it's tricks, Nicholas, but and it, it's, it's work. I mean, it's not easy, but it's doable. I'm mean, getting a, a company in Australia is a lot easier than most countries in the world. So the process is, it, it's a process. But what Juan said is really important. The person doesn't have to do it alone. They can go into an existing business that meets the requirements, as long as they have 30% of the uh, investment. And that company can nominate the person. What's important also is they may not be the technical person, but they may do something like a, a really important job in the company. So they might be the accountant, for example, the, or the marketing director. So they are people who are in the business who are showing um, they're adding value. But one of the things where Juan and I need to work together is early on we need to produce some documentation which demonstrates that the business that the investor wants to be involved with will meet the requirements because they you need to get, as Juan said, state sponsorship. To get state sponsorship, you have to submit commercial type documents. And that's where we work with Juan to ensure that they meet the requirements of the um, states. And, and they do vary from state to state. So it's important to understand. Um, and they are also quite commercial. So we need to be able to say that if you invest a certain amount of money, the project is likely to work. So they may say you need to have sufficient money in the project and you can't keep issuing shares, for example, because a 30% shareholder may fall under that critical number. So it's important that we continue to work with the person to ensure that they keep maintaining their shareholding, for example, which they need to have at the, during the period. So, yeah. If, Paul, if I want to invest, uh, can I contact you and there will be opportunities or projects that... Yeah, we, we have six complying projects at the moment, Nicholas, which are looking for investors. So one of the things that projects are H, because we do connect good projects with money, we have often entrepreneurs or founders who are looking for a business partner. They maybe get the term co-founder later, but that comes in early and helps them go through the hurdles. So quite often a creative person needs somebody stable that has been through business and sees things commercially. A bit of yin and yang, as they say, so that you get the balance between people. And then other investors like to see a balance. And what's important is most investors don't like to see a one-person company. So they're looking to see that there is a team and backup if something happens. So we do have, um, as I said, at least six companies at the moment looking for investors. Most of them are looking over at around $300,000. 
And I believe that some in certain states is what they're looking for as well. Because that, that really means you're looking towards a million dollar company. And if you have a million dollar company, it's far more likely to be successful than if it's if it's starved of capital, particularly at the beginning. Okay. Uh, for you both, do I need to uh, put my business into these sectors? Uh, or what is these sectors are so important now? Well, the, 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 these are the sectors that were identified by the treasurer in his statement, which was is part of the budget papers on the 6th of October. These are the key national areas, as one identified, where there are priorities. So, and, and they really tend to be smart areas. So advanced manufacturing is things like the state, space program. Um, cyber security speaks for itself. But food and agricultural business is actually becoming increasingly technological. Um, so, for example, product identification using um, Q codes and those sorts of things are really a big part now of obtaining exports. Medical technologies and pharmaceuticals, well, they large research in those. Mining equipment and technology is interesting because mining today is increasingly about doing it smarter with, with automation. And many Australian technologies are sold globally. So Australia is very proud of what it does in this space. So you can be an incremental person in helping the technology. Resources, being oil, gas and energy, are major to Australia. And there are lots of smaller developments in the technical space. One of our clients, for example, does battery technology. And that is not a very capital intensive business, but it's a very smart business. They know what they're doing and they work with clients. It seems um, um, and just, and quantum, quantum information just, is big numbers. All right. So just regarding the oil and gas uh, energy, um, it seems a bit problematic, no? Because there is this target of change completely the idea of how Australians use energy. And if, and especially people from overseas, they will like to, oh, they see Australia as an opportunity to work in oil and gas industries. What, what is the future? What do you think are, is the future? Because the government is changing those targets and they will saying, look, we are going to try to use uh, better natural resources. Um, what, what do you think? Well, if I mean, there are really two aspects to that. There's what is the domestic market and what's the export market. The government is saying what they wanted to be is zero emissions inside Australia. And even some of the companies who are doing exploration and development of gas fields are, zero, are working towards zero emissions. But mining and oil and gas exports are, are number one priority for Australia. Uh, I don't think you're going to see anybody suggesting that we should not be exporting iron or coal, oil, gas. Um, it's too significant to the Australian economy not to do it. And okay. our neighbours need it. So let's start creating uh, a pathway. What do you need? Uh, for migration purposes as what do you need for business purposes because it seems like it needs to be a connected uh, project and it seems like I need to start with both parts at the same time. Uh, do you think that that's true or should I just contact the migration process when I got everything ready? I, I, I think it's a, it's a mixed outcome. You mean you need to know that you have either your business idea will meet the criteria or um, that there is one available for you that does meet the criteria. But as Juan said, there are some fundamentals um, that you need to make sure you have first. 
So, I mean, I think you need to have the advice that you fit the criteria. Um, and particularly, say, if you are over 55, that you will get an exemption. And it may be that the exemption comes from the project. So it's a thing that Juan and I will need to work together on. Juan, mm, how that advice works? Uh, if, if a company is already running, oh, well, maybe it's in the very beginning, and you want to contact RC Migration, how is that advice or how the process works? <laughs> It's very simple, Nicholas. Uh, is, uh, the first consultation is with the, the with us in in the legal area. So we we see as Paul mentioned, as Paul mentioned, the fundamentals of the visa, the family structure, ages, uh, um, all the other elements that make the visa possible. What once we 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 check that this is a uh, this is an opportunity. We have a second uh, consultation with Paul and, uh, and his team, most regarding business. And in this second consultation is when we we integrate the business and the visa together, and we choose the, the we choose the project, we choose the state, we choose the timing, the amount of his investment, and then there is a, 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 a very simple process of uh, putting together the, the, the documentation, introduce to the, um, to, the, to the state, negotiate with the state. This is, this is mostly a dialogue because the state asks for one thing, they, they don't like another one, so we must to, to, to tweak here and there. And once we get the okay from the state, uh, the state invite to lodge the visa. Once the visa is, uh, is lodged, um, there is taking about uh, three or three months to get approved. And once the visa is approved, the client must to come to Australia and start the business. And is where the money must to be spent. The 200,000, 300,000 is where they have truly to start uh, making the payments. Okay. I mean, make, right. making the payments. All right. So the business contact RC Migration, they decide if they're eligible or what do they need to do. And in the case of uh, projects arranged, they do project arrange helps gathering documents, business plan, financial models. Could you pull, pull me or yeah, explain? So what, what, what's important is that when you lodge your application for state nomination, did you have a business plan which reflects what you're going to do? Because that's how you communicate with the state you're going to achieve their objectives. And some of their objectives are subtle. And one of them is they want to see that there's going to be jobs for people in their state. So it's important that we communicate the messages they need to hear. And one will be that there will be co-investors and there's a, a market for the product they're wanting to sell and that, we, that they can achieve the agree, ag agreed objective that the sponsoring company will get to sales of a million dollars in at least two of the four years of operation. So we need to ensure that what we present to the state on their behalf meets those ideas and objectives. And then those papers get sent on to um, Homeland Affairs where they do their assessment as one indicated. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, give you a few questions that our attendees send you early on to try to clarify how this matters. The first one will be, what are the measures of business success to get a permanent residence? Oh, like the, the main measure to achieve this permanent residence. Well, it's a, it's a technical answer, but um, they need to generally employ people from outside the business, outside the applicant, 
Scott's family for at least 60 hours a week and they need to get the business to a turnover of a million dollars in two of the four years. That's the commercial imperative we need to work with them to achieve. And can I have a business partner? And if is there more than one applicant, does the employment test or turnover test change? No, it doesn't, which really surprised me. Is, uh, but the answer is the company's assessed. So the company that which sponsors them um, can sponsor up to three people and their families. And if the company meets the criteria, that's what's required. Regarding visas. Oh, there is also one point we like, I like to stress here is that it's also a fantastic opportunity to partner with Australians which is very interesting because you can have an Australian partner to help you to establish the business. And this, 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 Australian, partner, uh, this Australian partner can is entitled to have some, some participation in the ownership of the company. Therefore, uh, the, the, the level of, of risk and uncertainty could be, will be greatly reduced. It's also a, an advantage in, the, in, in, in this visa. But is there a visa? If, if I'm in Australia, is there a visa requirement? Can a, a graduate, someone who is in a graduate visa participate or someone who is in a 408 visa uh, participate? Certainly. Yeah, this visa could be, could be lodged either in Australia or offshore Australia. If you are in Australia, you must to have any visa, provided your visa doesn't have a, a, a condition called no further stay. But, but for instance, if you are in a student visa or in a graduate visa or in a partner visa, or even in a tourist visa, you can apply. Yes, you are eligible to apply. Okay, because as a, especially right now, there is, it seems that this uncertainty regarding the, the borders, they're keeping close. And it seems like entrepreneurs are actually looking for other countries like China or maybe the European Union. And a few of the questions that we, we have is why Australia? Uh, because other countries might provide extra funding or extra support for the entrepreneurs, but why to choose Australia and not perhaps China or the US? If I could respond to that. In the seven areas identified earlier, there are special tax concessions, there are grants, there are university research assistance all provided. There are also incubators for new companies. But what is really important is what Juan said, they can join a company that's already on the journey. So if they become a 30% shareholder in a company that's on the journey, a lot of those things will be already understood. But for example, in registering for grants, there are professionals which help you do that in preparing business plans, we and other professionals help you do that. So many of the things that are seen as hurdles can be dealt with. Okay. Well, that's been a really interesting evening. I would like to thank you both to share these ideas with all of us. And if you have any other question or concern, we are here to help. You can find our contact number and email stay and well, we expect from here from all of you soon. Thank you, Juan, and thank you, Paul, for tonight. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Juan. Good night, Paul. Okay, great. I'm going just to edit the video. And that's it. Is that this the topic is interesting, but it's a shame. I'm I'm really um yeah. this we, we, we really need to understand the technical issue because we had the twenty people. Okay.
Okay. You want to take over? You take over. No, no, no.